Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta at Pune University's IUCA, Inter University Center for Astronomy and Astrophysics. And I stand here in this garden with all these great icons of science, particularly astronomy and astrophysics around the world. There is Galileo, there is Aryabhat, Einstein, and Newton to my left. And among these icons of many centuries, a living icon, who I have the privilege of having as my guest today, Professor Jayant Narlikar. Welcome to Walk the Talk. It is such a privilege. I feel honored Welcome to, to have Ayuka. you on the show. In fact, I feel honored that you considered it worth your while to talk to somebody who who you know knows nothing about your science. Oh, well, it's a pleasure talking to you on any topic. <laughs> Thank you, sir. So, uh, so you, you built this garden, you built this institution. Well, I should confess that I had good help in all departments right. when this center was being built. So I was really fortunate. Right. So I won't take the credit myself, but like to share it with so right. many others. But you know, good... Ac Academics also have to be institution builders, which I find with academics of your generation. Professor Sierna Rao has built a great lab in Bangalore. Yeah. You built a great lab here. Yes, uh, this was motivated by Professor Yashpal, right. uh, who was the chairman of uh, University Grants Commission. Right. And he felt that uh, in the field of astronomy and astrophysics, universities have very few facilities. Right. So he needed a centralized facility which will help all the university academics. That is how Ayuka came about. So, sir, what is astronomy and astrophysics? Okay. Let's start there. <laughs> <laughs> I know that you've been, you give lectures all over the world okay. simplifying science. Well, let me say that astronomy is one of the oldest. Because subjects. science is too important to be left to scientists. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I agree. We, we do get a lot of inspiration from uh, outside science. Right. Now, uh, science uh, of astronomy came from looking at the sky. Right. And you see heavenly bodies, stars, and uh, if you can imagine, you can see galaxies. Right. But now with telescopes, you can see them much more clearly. Much more clear. So you have these uh, uh, observational inputs and you would like to know what it is all about. So the observations you collect form the subject of astronomy. And when you try to understand what is going on, why is the sun shining, why are stars red, white, right. blue. Or why is the sky blue. Yeah, or the sky is blue. Yeah. So there is physics behind it. So that takes us to astrophysics. Right. Then uh, subsequently people began to discover uh, organic and inorganic molecules in space. Right. And that brought about astrochemistry. I see. And now the intriguing possibility is life in existence outside the Earth. Right. And that takes us to astrobiology. Uh -huh. So uh, these are younger sciences. Right. The oldest is astronomy, then astrophysics. So these are the major thrust areas. Right. But uh, astrochemistry and astrobiology are coming up right. and sooner... But a scientist, sir, as long as a scientist remains curious, a scientist is always young. Yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> scientists should always be curious. curious. And uh, you said about youth. I think the scientist is young so long as he is curious. So you are as young today at 76 as you were at 26, when you became India's youngest ever Padma Bhushan winner? Possibly, yeah. <laughs> at 26 in the 60s, you know, it was, it was yeah. some yeah. achievement. Because at that point, people, people could see scientific talent, perhaps yeah. in a manner that our system doesn't see now. Maybe. I, I always feel that uh, that was a pat on my back uh, from a nation which was expecting more from me. Right. So and that, so you continue to do more and you so built it. That, that was always my feeling. And yes. I, sir, uh, I believe when you founded this institution, hmm. you brought New Isaac Newton in yes. with the apple. That's right. I, I used to talk about this institution uh, abroad also. Right. And once I was talking in Australia, and I made my usual joke that 
Newton is sitting under a banyan tree. Banyan tree, yes. And he is wondering how the apple fell out of the <laughs> banyan tree. So that is astrobiology <laughs> and astrochemistry. In fact, that is more <laughs> difficult problem than law of gravitation. Yes. So when I said this, the, of course there was laughter and so on. Then one Australian scientist told me afterwards that why don't I get an apple tree uh -huh. uh, planted behind Newton and why don't I get the descendant of the original apple tree which was in Newton's garden. Right. I didn't know it was available and he told me the chapter and verse where to get it. Right. Eventually I succeeded and there was one here and one behind Einstein. So apple trees in Pune. Yes. <laughs> People said apples won't survive in Pune. Pune. Uh, you have to be in a mountain climate and so right. on. But I said, let us try. Right. And it did work. For about 14, 15 years we had this. Right. We right. got apples out of the right. tree. So I would say that uh, it was a worth, worthwhile exercise. Right. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the tree died because of some illness. Which but I believe you used to get fruits also from that tree. Yes, we got the fruit and I cut the fruit and left it for uh, my yes, graduate scholars. students to share. Right. No, it's like Prasad. <laughs> Prasad from Newton. <laughs> <laughs> but I told, told them, uh, simply eating the apple <laughs> will, will not make, make you astrophysicist. You, you have to work hard <laughs> yourself. <laughs> so, sir, we go from Newton to... Galileo, yes, 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 because you know, science yeah. doesn't always reward you. Science mm. also, <laughs> to have scientific temper, you also have to pay a price. Yes, that's true. Now, uh, about Galileo, right. another scientist who visited us said that uh, Galileo is in a typical, uh, what you call, a state, uh, uh, asking for money. You I see, see his hand is like <laughs> right. this. And astronomers are always short, short of money. Of money. <laughs> <laughs> so, so he said that this is uh, a very uh, good description. Right. Mm -hmm. But sir, over the centuries, uh, scientists who come up with a new idea yeah. face resistance. That's right. They face it and From the Galileo, Galileo brought in the telescope for the right. first time. Right. And people would not believe what they saw through the telescope. Right. Because it went against their beliefs. beliefs. So they said, uh, it, this is all Maya Jal. <laughs> <laughs> but sir, things are changing. The Pope accepts evolution yes. now. Yes, the Pope now accepts uh, what Galileo was saying. Right. Uh, he had a committee appointed to look into Galileo's treatment. Right. And uh, then they exonerated him <laughs> and said that he was... Uh, correct in whatever he said. As Christ would have said, they didn't know what they were doing. <laughs> so, yes. one. so, sir, uh, I bet mm -hmm. you've been introduced as an astrologer all over the country. Because in India, there's a great confusion. Astronomy, exactly. astrophysics, exactly. astrology is simple. You just have to be Panditji. <laughs> Probably I would have earned more money. More money. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, and frankly, yeah. more fame. <laughs> Possible, and yes. politicians would be hanging outside your house. <laughs> but my efforts are all the time to show what is science and what is not science. And in that sense, uh, we did conduct uh, experiments to show that astrological prediction uh, is no of no value. Uh, is of no value. Uh, <coughs> I showed. Uh, we showed one particular example. Uh, if you like to hear right. that, this, that we had uh, 100 uh, samples right. of uh, um, birth charts, right. uh, Kundalis, Kundalis of, yes. uh, very bright students right. and 100 from mentally retarded students. Right. We mixed them up and asked astrologers to tell us which are which. which. One is which? And they, they completely failed. <laughs> See, now you are... Now you're taking pangas with astrologers. Yes. You don't know what they will do. They can even shift planetary <laughs> configurations, which you cannot do. Yes. They, they might. <laughs> they, they have off with. <laughs> so, sir, have, uh, has your center, have you been confused for astrology? Uh, well, <clears throat> as you might have heard, in our very first year, on the, in the Pune Telephone Directory, our name appeared as Astrology and Astrophysics.
Uh-huh. And <laughs> I said, how did this happen? We, we had filled out all the... Astronomy and astrophysics. Which, with astronomy there. So somebody in the telephone department. office uh, department may have thought these people may have made a mistake. And he put, corrected us. So this is happening, but happening. hopefully we will uh, introduce, bring some more light into this whole area of darkness. But sir, uh, how did we get so confused and when? Because we had, we had a history of scientific research. We mm-hmm. had a history of scientific curiosity. We have Arya Bhatt here. Yes. Uh, so far back, uh, yeah. he imagined what Galileo imagined later. Yeah. Uh, where did we lose it? When did an Indian mindset, when did astronomy become astrology? I think astronomy, ast- astrology and astronomy came more or less together, but right. uh, whatever historical documentation we have, the planetary astrology, right. you know, okay, Mangal is doing this damage to you, or uh, Saturn is bad, all these ideas came from the Greeks. Oh, I see. See, and uh, you find there is hardly any dis- uh, description in the Vedas about astrology. I see. Uh, it came later. It's a borrowed science. In it's a, way. a borrowed science. It's what I would call imported superstition.